in the previous episode, we spoke about the number of battles that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had in, um, uh, in his time uh, during his prophethood, his 23 years of prophethood and messengerhood. And the very first major battle that happened between the Muslims and the Meccan people um, was the Battle of Badr. Um, and this battle was, this is the first major battle. Uh, before that, when the Muslims emigrated, they, when they left the city of Mecca due to the marginalization and the torture and the killing that the Meccan people were doing uh, to the Muslims, uh, when they arrived to Medina and they established themselves, it wasn't an easy process to maintain that that the integrity of uh, of the uh, of the community that they have created because there were quite a bit of jealous people uh, from around Medina as well as from outside of Medina that really wanted to basically kill the prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and uh, eliminate and neutralize uh, the muslims and what the prophet peace be upon him started doing is that he started to send those saraya those very small platoons uh, for different purposes so he would send them to explore he would send them on some uh, recon reconnaissance or some um, you know intelligence collection or uh, some activities to uh, stop uh, a certain caravan uh, especially a one that belongs to the meccan people um, and most of those attempts to kind of basically intervene in the uh, in the route of a caravan that belongs to the Meccan people did not result in anything that um, that is substantial. Uh, most of the caravans uh, escaped. And it wasn't until the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the Muslims heard of a big caravan that the Meccan people have sent uh, to the Sham, to, do, to, to, the, to, to the Syrian uh, countries, uh, the countries around Syria there, uh, it's called Bilad al-Sham, the abode of Sham. And what the Meccan people used to do is that they used to send these caravans um, during uh, one half of the year. They would send a caravan to Sham, to Syria, and the other half of the, of the year, they would send the caravan to uh, Yemen, the area of Yemen, which was in the south. So this caravan was led by Abu Sufyan, uh, who is... Uh, a leader in Mecca and it had it said it, it said that it had a thousand camels and it had um, a lot of wealth in it and a lot of business and when the Muslims heard of that they knew that uh, in that caravan was also all of the wealth that the Meccan people have taken from them uh, when the Muslims ran away from Mecca because when when the Muslims emigrated as refugees to to Medina they didn't take much with them. You can't take much when you're running away. You have to leave everything behind. As a matter of fact, there are some stories where people who wanted to leave and meet with the Prophet, peace be upon him, their family didn't even allow them to keep the clothes that they had on. Um, so they, um, w w one, one of the companions, uh, what he had to do is that he had to take a very old, uh, dirty piece of rug and just rip it into, into two halves and cover himself with it and just go uh, walking to uh, to Medina, which is a pretty long distance. It's not a short distance. It's a pretty long distance. Um, I think it's about four hours uh, driving at about you know 160, 170 kilometers an hour. So it's a pretty pretty long distance. Uh, and this man the, that I'm talking about, the companion, he he was actually considered a from a very rich and well-off family. So he was not used to this hardship, but he had to do it. Uh, many of the other uh, companions, many of the other women and children and men, they just left with, with nothing. And then uh, Quraysh, the, basically the governing body in Mecca, they went into the houses of, uh, of those Muslims and they basically took everything. <laughs> they took their wealth and, uh, and they basically considered it uh, their own. So they confiscated uh, this, uh, this wealth. So when the Muslims heard of this caravan, they said, okay, well, we're going to go after this. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, for this specific <clears throat> uh, mission, he led the, the platoon that went out. And he didn't force anybody to, to come. The main idea was that we're going to go and inter uh, inter uh, basically intervene uh, this, van, uh, this caravan. Um, we're going to uh, stop it and we're going to uh, uh, take it. And they heard that 
the leader, uh, Abu Sufyan, didn't have much protection uh, with him. So he had 30 to 40 people, which wasn't much. For a caravan of a thousand camels, that's not uh, much. So the Muslims went out and Abu Sufyan heard uh, that the Muslims are coming. Abu Sufyan is a very intelligent man himself uh, and he, you know, you cannot be just, you know, the leader of, of the community and not be intelligent enough. And he knew the area very well. So what he did is that he quickly sent to the Meccan people saying, uh, a man who, once he arrived to Mecca, he started basically screaming uh, from the top of his lungs, saying, you know, come get your, uh, your money. Uh, Muhammad and uh, his companions are going to take it and you know you either do that or you lose all your money and and basically he you know motivated people in Mecca to start preparing uh, for basically protecting that that caravan now in the meanwhile Abu Sufyan the leader of that caravan could not be just waiting there for help to come so he started dodging the uh, the Muslims and he kept dodging them uh, in different ways until they almost met with the Muslims. Um, however, Abu Sufyan um, ended up seeing a man that was around and he asked him, did you see anybody in, in this area? And he said, nobody that I don't know except two people uh, that were riding and they left. They sat here for a little bit and then they left. So Abu Sufyan told him, show me where, where they sat. So they, so he took them, uh, so the man took Abu Sufyan to where those two men sat. And he found the, basically the, um, uh, the bodily products of the, of those two uh, camels that they were riding, that those two men were riding. So he grabbed the, um, uh, this bodily product and he uh, broke it. And then he found uh, within it, the um, the remains of the dates of Medina, uh, the city where the prophet used to uh, or they or the prophet uh, sought refuge in. So he said, those two men must be the men of uh, of Muhammad peace be upon him. He didn't say peace be upon him, but uh, you know I'm saying it because uh, we're Muslims. And he he immediately went back very quickly and he he ran uh, back to the caravan and he took the caravan because he was coming south. He was coming from Syria down to Mecca. Um, so he decided to um, to. Right along the um, the Red Sea, and that's how he escaped the Muslims until he got to uh, Mecca and once he escaped the Muslims he sent back to uh, Mecca and to Quraysh and he told them look you guys prepared yourselves um, and you came out uh, to protect your caravan the caravan is good now go back and you know Quraysh when they got motivated they didn't just leave with like you know 200 300 400 uh, men no they left with everybody they brought the young and the old, the slave, they brought people who sing, they brought the alcohol with them, they brought everything. They really, really wanted to go out and celebrate. And they basically left with about a thousand people. 200 of them, they were riding, they were riding horses. Um, so they, they were not just walkers. Amongst the Muslims, the Muslims uh, didn't have uh, many horses. Uh, most of them, they were walking. There were around 314 uh, people. And uh, now when Abu Sufyan tells the Meccan people go back, guess what happens? The uncle of the Prophet, peace be upon him, Abu Jahl, he says, no, we will not go back. Uh, we will move and we'll move forward until we get to the area that, uh, of Badr. And then we're going to sleep there for three days. And we're going to have concerts there and we're going to be drinking there so that the whole Arabian Peninsula hears about our courage and this way we deter the Muslims from attempting to go uh, and attack our caravans again. Hmm. Uh, he was trying to play a strategy. Now, the Prophet peace be upon him, when he left with the companions, they left just to to get the caravan, they, they were not prepared for war. As a matter of fact, they didn't force anybody to come out. They just told people, whoever wants to come, let's go. And now it is a situation of a battle. 
So when the caravan escaped, the morale of the Muslims, um, uh, they, they felt like, oh, another one that escaped us. And they were not feeling, you know, very motivated. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, he, t he told them, we're going to keep going after that caravan. So they got motivated and then they kept going after the caravan. Once the caravan escaped, now uh, they are face, they're, fa they're almost face to face with the Meccan people. So 300 people versus about 1,000 people. Not an easy situation. Um, in that uh, in that moment, the Prophet peace be upon him started to uh, do consultation, started to do shura. Shura means to ask the people. Uh, it means to consult the people. Like, what do we do? And uh, the people that were refugees, the muhajireen, the people that emigrated from Mecca to Medina, they all said, you know, we're with you, the Prophet of Allah. The people of Medina, the, the ones that were natives to Medina, the Prophet wanted also their, uh, their opinion that they would join if there was a war to happen. And the Prophet continued to ask, like, you know, Ashiru alayya yuhannas, tell me, what do you guys think? So he's basically just waiting for them to say, yes, we are with you. And one of the people in Medina, or, or, or the people of Medina, uh, he, he stood up and he said, oh Prophet of Allah, it is as if you're asking us to be with you. And the Prophet said, yes. So the man said, uh, he spoke very eloquently and basically agreeing that, you know, him and everybody else, we, that they're going to be with the Prophet, peace be upon him, in this. And this was very important for the Prophet, peace be upon him, because the people of Medina, when they invited him in, they invited him in with the conditions that they will be protecting uh, the Muslims from any uh, sort of uh, external attack, from any sort of aggression that might come upon them. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, just wanted to make sure that they didn't understand that that only meant in, within Medina. There could be even battles that can happen outside of Medina. So this uh, little implied negotiation right here ended up clarifying that. And that's how the uh, the Muslims uh, ended up deciding to meet with the Meccan people. The Meccan people had basically the elite. Everybody came out, like even the fathers, the brothers, and the sons that of the people that accepted Islam, and they were on the opposite uh, or in the in, in the basically the the enemy front. Um, they they were there, like basically the brother was meeting his brother, and the son was meeting his father, and and the cousin was meeting his cousin. And this is a major event. This was not a small um, event. In the end of the day, they have decided, you know, with the stubbornness of the Meccan people and the determination of the Muslims, you know, they decided to uh, meet uh, face to face. So that's how that battle, uh, that battle uh, ended up manifesting. Uh, we will talk about the details of that battle uh, in another episode. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and I will see you in the next episode.